The video which you are about to see is a ranking of every member of the Sawyer family, sometimes referred to as the Slaughter family. This family of sadistic, murderous cannibals have been terrifying audiences for decades in one of the most bizarre franchises in the annals of horror history, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'm Griff Robodanger, and yes, in this video, I'm ranking every family member from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre lineage, which includes the 1974 original and every film that directly follows it. I'm not including the 2003 Platinum Dunes remake or its uh, prequel because that's the Hewitt family and that's a totally different story. Standard disclaimer, these rankings are my opinion. You may not agree with them. That's fine. Let's get started. Number 19, Random Sawyers. The 2013 film Texas Chainsaw opens with a scene that takes place immediately after the events of the original film. This scene introduces a bunch of random family members who exist just to be killed by a vigilante mob. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, but you expect me to believe that these ordinary looking rednecks fit in with unhinged weirdos like Leatherface and Hitchhiker? I mean, come on. This dude with his perfectly trimmed beard or this lady with her nice white slacks. You're telling me they hang out in this disgusting house with human body parts everywhere no chance number 18 bear sawyer from the same scene we meet bear sawyer who's supposed to be leatherface's great uncle what is this duck dynasty you can't be serious with this guy the second i saw these new characters it was clear that the makers of this reboot had zero understanding of the characters from toby hooper's original films these new characters are just lazy stereotypical rednecks I don't know how you look at this, or this, or this, and think typical basic redneck. Speaking of characters from this scene... Number 17, Boss Sawyer. According to this film's lore, Boss Sawyer is Leatherface's grandfather, but he's not. THE grandpa, who is actually the great grandpa according to this stupid movie. That boy ain't never been right. Even for a Sawyer. Okay, I think it's cool that this character is played by the original Leatherface actor Gunnar Hansen, but let's be real, there's no way I'm believing that this is the guy leading this nutso family. He's just too level-headed. He's too clean-cut. I mean, come on. These motherfuckers have their dead grandmother upstairs just sitting in a chair. Like, that's a totally normal thing. This character just doesn't exude dead grandmother upstairs energy. Number 16, Loretta Sawyer. From that same scene comes Loretta Sawyer. I believe she's Leatherface's sister, but who the hell knows with this movie? Help us. I don't really know what to say about this character. We barely spend any time with her, and her entire point of existing is that she gave birth to... Number 15, Edith Rose Sawyer. Edith Rose Sawyer, also known as Heather Miller, is initially unaware of her heritage. She inherits the family's estate when her grandmother Verna dies and discovers the truth about her origins. Do your thing, cuz. Okay, hey, listen. This has nothing to do with Alexandra Daddario's performance. She does her best with what she was given, but nothing about this character works for me or makes any damn sense. So this character is born in 1973, but this movie takes place in 2012, meaning Heather is supposed to be a 39-year-old woman, even though she's played by a woman who was 25 when this was filmed, and Heather and all her friends are depicted as if they're around 21 years old. I do like her as a final girl in the scenes where she's being chased, but the whole embracing your heritage stuff at the end of the movie, it just felt too unbelievable for me, and she's just way too chill about her newly acquired relative eating her friends. Number 14, Verna Sawyer Carson. First introduced in 2013's Texas Chainsaw and featured prominently in the 2017 Leatherface prequel, Verna Sawyer Carson is the mother of Leatherface. She is depicted as a manipulative and ruthless individual who is fiercely protective of her family. Bad people like him, they're trying to break our family apart. But we're not gonna let that happen, right? While there are moments with this character I like, as a whole, the character just doesn't really make sense. We're supposed to believe Verna is unhinged enough to be raising her children to be murderous cannibals, yet somehow we're also supposed to believe she's 
cultured enough to convince a rich guy to marry her later in the film. I just never really understood or believed this character's motivation for doing the things she did in relation to, like, murder and cannibalism. Number 13, Little Girl, Sawyer. From Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, this homicidal child is simply named Little Girl in the credits. Some sources claim she's Leatherface's daughter, although that is never explicitly verified in the movie. Because if you don't poke them, then they don't leak. So I'm torn on this character. The idea of a child being raised in this environment has a lot of potential. I just don't think they stuck the landing here. I think they leaned too hard into making her this overtly evil little girl, and it just feels too one note and not really believable to me. Like, this kid's playroom is littered with all sorts of bones of Lord knows what. You would think that like, this is some sort of feral child, but the way she speaks and acts just feels too polished, I guess. There's just a disconnect for me here. Number 12, W.E. Slaughter. W.E. is a brother of Leatherface, introduced in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. He's best known for constantly quoting famous historical figures. You probably didn't know that, did you? Of course you didn't, because you're a bona fide moron. I have nothing against W.E. as a character. He's just kind of boring and unmemorable compared to the other characters in this film. I just rewatched this movie, and I've already forgotten anything he does in the final act. Number 11, Mama Sawyer. Introduced in part three, Mama Sawyer was Leatherface's mother in the original timeline before they retconned her with Verna in 3D. You best shuttle the around to your top first. Just like WE, there's nothing really wrong with this character. I like the performance and she feels on brand to the franchise. It's just that she really wasn't given a lot to do. Her moments on screen are fine, but if we're being honest, they could have cut her out of the script and the story wouldn't really be changed in any meaningful way. Number 10, Darla Slaughter. In the next generation, Darla Slaughter is the wife or maybe the girlfriend of Leatherface's brother, Vilmer. She's an insurance agent who helps the family capture unsuspecting victims. That's just somebody I got tied up back there. Now, Darla's a tough one. Uh, I wasn't even sure if I should include her on this list because she's not technically blood, but her realtor business lists her as Darla Slaughter, which is, you know, the last name of the other, you know, family members in this movie. So in the very least, she identifies as a member of this family. So what the hell? Darla is so outside the box of this family dynamic, yet in this film and the setting it establishes, it kind of works. You ever meet someone and think, hey, this person's all right. Then at some point in the conversation, out of nowhere, they just say something batshit crazy and you're like, okay then, never mind. That's Darla. I think she fits nicely in that pocket of characters who can pass as normal, but become unhinged on a dime. And she's the only female character on this list that's allowed to have any fun. She's one of the bright spots in this mess of a movie. Number nine, Tex Sawyer. Tex Sawyer is another brother of Leatherface. He appears in part three, using his charm and good looks to lure unsuspecting victims to their doom. Oh, I like Tex. So I'm not sure how someone as dashing as Tex popped out of this family, but this just seems to be a more attractive branch of the Sawyer family tree in general. At first glance, it would seem like Tex doesn't really fit in with this family, but I think between Viggo Mortensen's performance, the writing, and the various quirks they gave this character, it all comes together in a way that makes sense. Number 8, Tinker Sawyer. Part 3's Tinker is yet another brother to Leatherface. He is a skilled mechanic who engineers gadgets that aid the family in killing. She looks to me like she might go all screamy on us. Tinker is kind of an underrated character in my opinion. He flies under the radar a little because he's not over the top, he's not grotesque, he's not showy, he doesn't really have an obvious hook, no pun intended, but he's probably the most grounded, the most realistic character in the series. There are these little moments with him that I really, I think are really well done. Like, you see him showing kindness and compassion to his family, and then in the very next breath, saying something awful and horrendous about their prey. There's something about the tribalism and duality there that I think is just 
kind of intriguing. Yeah, he would have had a good career in politics. And the whole thing with building the contraptions to aid in the killing process, it's kind of fun. Number 7. Alfredo Sawyer Alfredo Sawyer is a creepy pervert who works at the family's gas station. He likes to watch women pee. Also, he's another Leatherface brother. I'm gonna service you real good, man. Don't you worry about it. Alfredo is just an absolute creep. I love how skeevy this character is. He's really the last character introduced to the franchise that's just instantly off-putting. Sort of the last spiritual successor to characters like Hitchhiker and Chop Top. I feel like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies need weird off-kilter characters like this to be the middle ground between the normal presenting family members and the full-on grotesqueness of Leatherface. Number 6. Vilmer Slaughter Vilmer Slaughter from Next Generation is another brother of Leatherface. He's a psychotic tow truck driver with a weird cybernetic leg. Let me ask you one question. Are you having fun yet? Oh, God. Okay, I know some of you are going to think I'm insane for this one. I get it. But the performance from Matthew McConaughey here is so gloriously unhinged that I can't help but love it. I don't know if any other actor, aside from maybe Nick Cage, could have pulled off a performance like this. Every second he's on the screen, he devours the scenery. This character is relentlessly sadistic for 99% of his screen time. He's an asshole to everyone. And yet, somehow, his bonkers energy and charm make him fun to watch. He deserved to be in a better movie than this. Number 5. Grandpa Sawyer The elderly and feeble patriarch of the Sawyer family, Grandpa is mostly immobile and dependent on others to carry out acts of violence. My old Grandpa is the best killer there ever was. I never took more than one lick, they say. You know, I had a tough time with this one. On one hand, he doesn't speak, he barely moves, he's honestly more than a prop than a full-fledged character, but despite all that, his presence is undeniable. He's the focal point of this family. His backstory, his lore, it informs the whole series. And while his screen time is limited and he doesn't really get to do a lot, the things he does get to do are so gross and off-putting. He steals every scene that he's in, even in the third film when he's a literal corpse. Number four, the hitchhiker Nubbins Sawyer. From the original film, hitchhiker Nubbin Sawyer is actually the first villain we meet in the franchise. He's a deranged weirdo who robs graves when he isn't helping the family kill unsuspecting travelers. With a sledge. <laughs> See, that was better. They died better that way. The thing that's great about the hitchhiker is how blatantly skeevy he is. The second you meet him, you're instantly uncomfortable. Unlike, you know, the cook and some of the other characters in this list, this man is too far gone to effectively blend in anywhere in society. In that van scene, he is struggling to hold the crazy in. I also like the way he's introduced as sort of this weak and pitiful character, but the second the odds are in his favor, he switches gears and reveals how dangerously unhinged he really is. Number 3. Chop Top Sawyer From Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, Chop Top is a Vietnam War veteran and the twin brother of the hitchhiker. He has an exposed metal plate in his head. Dog will hunt. It might be controversial to put Chop Top above Hitchhiker, but for me, Chop Top edges his twin by having just more memorable moments. I love how weird this character is, and I love how weird looking this character is. He's the only character on this list that rivals Leatherface and Grandpa in being outwardly grotesque in appearance. I love his interactions with Leatherface in this movie. I love everything at the radio station, the way he scratches around his metal plate with the coat hook. It's disgusting and it's perfect. Number two, the cook Drayton Sawyer. The cook Drayton Sawyer is Leatherface's older brother and head of the family. He runs the family gas station where he serves unsuspecting patrons barbecue made from the family's human victims. Years later, he serves his award-winning human chili across the state of Texas. I, I just can't take no pleasure in killing. There's just some things you gotta do. The cook 
for me is the glue that holds the first two movies together. When I think about the most memorable lines, the most quotable lines from this franchise, the majority of them are from Drayton. He gets the best character arc in the series from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1 to 2. There's this carny vibe to the character that stays consistent through both films, but you get to see it in different ways from when he's this struggling gas station owner to this successful chili chef who's winning these awards and who just thinks he's like a big shot all of a sudden. Jim Sedow loads this character with personality and humor and charm. Number one, Leatherface. Leatherface is the iconic chainsaw wielding killer of the family and the only character to appear in every Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. He wears human skin masks made from the faces of his victims. I mean, who else am I going to pick for number one? With all due respect to all the great characters we've already discussed, there would be no Texas Chainsaw Massacre without Leatherface. He is an absolute horror icon and his influence on horror is immeasurable. One of my favorite things about this character is how he evolves across the different films in this series. How he's almost animalistic at times, but occasionally shows humanity and flashes of understanding. I love how horned up he is in part two, or how he goes through this rebellious teenager phase in part three. Yeah, we're not gonna talk about this. It never happened. So how would you rank these characters? How different would your list be to mine? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, be sure to subscribe. And here's some other stuff to check out. And until next time, later danger seekers.